Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello. Welcome and hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome to the 22nd NSCHA Global Women's Forum. And today we'll be reviewing Spirited Away. And she will start off with the exercise. All right. Okay, here we go. Starting, I think we're going to do three of these. Starting now. One. And three. We're going to follow up with the bump. And I know some of you uh, were saying that um, at times you're feeling it in uh, the vibration in one hand instead of, you know, both hands. Well, that's fine. Uh, don't worry about that. You know, the more you do it, the more it bumps you up, the more you're going to feel it in both hands. So, you know, uh, all that's just say, you know, don't uh, be too concerned about it. As long as you're feeling the energy coming in and you're feeling the, the um, essence of the increase of the vibration. All right, so here we go. Approximately 12 inches apart. And I'm already pushing that energy through. Anyone not feeling it, let me know. Uh, okay. Eight. Yes. Jessica here. I don't quite feel it. Okay. All right. Here we go. Focus in the other room. All right. Let me know when you feel it. Okay. <coughs> I feel it. Okay. Good. Yeah. Some the create increase. So not feeling the increase, let me know. Okay, good. So we're going to contain as we go containing our space, containing the form, containing ourselves. Starting now, I would say mm, I'm going to do five of these. Starting now, one, two. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. So I'm going to start pushing that energy outward through your space. Okay, so Ms. A, I'm going to get started with the... Uh, the story, or the questions first? Uh, let's start with the story first. Okay. So, we start out with, um, first of all, this movie is... Were you going to say something? Well, actually, I was going to say just uh, a little bit of intro. Uh, and I believe all of, you have, all of you have seen the film. It's been out for a good while. This is one of my favorite uh, animations, actually, of all time. Uh, and I consider Maizaki uh, to be one of the uh, premier uh, directors of, the, of animation uh, of all times also. Uh, one of the things I, uh, that attracted me to his uh, work was um, me having a daughter and, uh, and actually seeing some of his, uh, his films and realizing that he has a number of films that really supports uh, young girls actually, you know, being strong. And I definitely wanted that for my own kid. And so there's a number of, uh, of films that uh, come to mind. He's done quite a few, but the ones that come to mind uh, have been, you know, Spirited Away, which might be one of his most popular ones, and uh, My Neighbor Tor Tortoro, which is probably, you know, number two. Uh, there's Howl's Moving Castle. There's a. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna um, 
Um, the cat's return. Yeah, well, cat's return. That you know, that's one that uh, that's you know kind of uh, known, but you know, really, really, uh, really liked uh, uh, by you know uh, by his fans as well. So he's done a number of other ones, like you know, Castle in the Sky. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. The, um, Princess the, Mononoke as well, but yeah, that Princess one Mononoke is kind of bizarre. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one kind of left me kind of feeling a little weird. Uh, the animation uh, quality of the animation is really, really great in, in its work. But, uh, but again, uh, what I liked it was Kiki's um, Kiki's delivery, delivery service. service yeah, yeah. Which another has to do with you know a young girl and she's being adventurous and so on and and uh, so anyway, that's one of the reasons I uh, I like the um, you know like this uh, animation, but also just the quality of the animation. I thought it was really, really well as well as the storytelling. So anyway, with that said. Yes, we can um, proceed. Um, yes, I liked, uh, I really love all the details in this movie. Like, even from like her, her tapping her shoe or her like scooting her way up the car window and then looking out at the school and sticking her tongue out. It's just like lots of little details. Yeah, and he, I think I, I saw um, the documentary some years ago where he was talking about he liked the little details that makes it more human, you know, more real. So when he was talking about the tapping the shoes, like when she puts you know put your shoes on and then you just kind of make sure your toe gets to the end of the, you know that type of just kind of just seem like minor details, but add so much to the animation, you know, mm. to the experience. Okay, thanks, Chief. Yeah. So um, you were talking about there's no letdowns in this movie, which was uh, really interesting because mm -hmm. in the NSTHA me, um, media ratings. Uh, uh, rating system, it got a 10% programming and 90% NSTHA information. But if you, that's mostly if you watch the Japanese version and the subtitles are in Jap, you know, English, but you're watching Japanese version because if you watch the English dub, it adds more programming, about 15% programming and then 85% um, NSTHA information you can gather. So let's see. We'll start out with, as you know, she she's in the car with um, her parents and her par and she starts talking and um, well, they're all talking about moving to a new place. And it just uh, the first program that comes up is, is um, just her experiences of how she's a bit afraid of the unknown and uh, change, the new changes that are coming. Mm -hmm. um, but again, reading the, uh, you know, listening to the audio and then reading the subtitle. They don't match. You know, yeah, it's, it's like <clears throat> almost watching a slightly different movie because uh, there's certain things that are added in in the audio. As far as I, I don't know if you have, you have some um, examples. I have some examples. I do. Part. I have lots of so, examples, but like, yeah. for example, um, sometimes I know that as when you do an, whenever you do um, whenever there's someone who's a voice actor, they're trying to match the mouth movements. I know that they're trying to find words to match, but sometimes they, if they change it so much, it just loses the, the whole essence of that character at times. Oh, what the, I'd say the director intended, you know, that could change the meaning a bit. So, okay. um, yeah, so, I'm not correcting you, I'm just, you know. No, no, it's a, no, yeah. totally fine. I'm, I'm going to give some examples like you asked for, Chief. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> so on the card, I thought, I thought I, just to let, just an FYI, in the English dub, you're going to find the reason why it's 15, five more percent of programming is because they're promoting programs of friendship, best friends, fast friends, missing you, love, and fear. Ugh! Yeah, we, these are all what they call um, right? loaded words. words. Loaded words, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they're all, they're all loaded words. So it's not like, oh, we have this problem with you know people saying that they're friends or whatever. Um, but, you know, what does that mean, literally? And then what does the programming say, you know, with this fast friend stuff? So there's some scenes in there where, you know, they're referring to certain characters as her friend. And she just met them. And she just met them, and in, in, in under the circumstances in which she met them uh, wasn't great. They were they're literally trying to her nemesis. Yeah. yeah. They were like enemies, and, you know, but then someone's referring to them as her friends in the, you know, in the audio. Just because they had some experiences and they stopped trying to attack her, now they're her friends. Not yeah. really, they're her acquaintances. Yeah, but it is a strong program. You know, yeah. I know in the movie uh, The Matrix, uh, there was someone asked a question about, uh, you know, Neo, uh, you know, just I guess going about trying to do 
know, free humanity or whatever, uh, with his friends and all these guys on the Nebuchadnezzar when, you know, uh, they didn't really bother to think about the guy, Cypher, who was the one who ratted everybody out, you know. So it's this assumption that just, they're using the word friends so loosely. And that's where I have a problem with this. It's just uh, uh, like the word loves, it's used it really loosely, uh, you know, and it's almost like some really, like, weak fallback, you know, kind of words. So anyway. Yeah. But you know, um, not to not to to try to separate yourself from the questions that you ask, to look at them as you know this is whatever program I'm dealing with. Not that you know if Chief says that your question has some issues to it, not to look at it like oh, I'm personally, you know, horrible because I asked that question. It's not that question. Chief's not doesn't. He, if your intent is genuine that you really want to learn, he's never going to give you an F. <laughs> no, you know, definitely not to be well, someone down so that they don't ask. And, you know, I have to admit that there are a lot of times there's a lot of programming comes up in questions, but I'm just showing the programming, you know, yes. and that, you know, if you can take it without feeling like you're being beat up, then you're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I already uh, say it in a, you know, in a way where, whoa, you must be stupid, you, you know, you believe this or that or whatever. So it's this, you know, if you really look at it the way that I am, you know, uh, teaching you about things, you will actually see all the holes and all the flaws in it. And just realize that, you know, how much programming is in the realm that everything, you you know, it's like, you know, came up in the last forum, uh, if, you know, it's a line to get from like the matrix, you know, everything you smell, touch, eat, hear, you know, and they literally have that in the matrix, you know, in that movie. And it's something I've been saying for quite a while. And it wasn't that I got it from the movie, it's just that that's the reality that I so and, and um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay, that. if that's okay. Sure. Um, because she. Uh, Am I loud enough? Uh, uh, everyone hear me well enough? Maybe no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, chief. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I don't know if I need to you know, project more because sometimes my my volume goes down and I want to make sure that everyone. You know, uh, it goes up when it. you're passionate, though. So. <laughs> And, and, and that's another thing, Chief, like I personally, I feel that I've grown because when you say that a, a program might be stupid or something, I look at it, you know what, you're right, Chief, this program is stupid and I'm running a stupid program, whatever it may right. be. Tell you no, no, uh, but you know, because I, I don't have to view it as I'm stupid because stupid is just a word. It's the intent, intent behind it that you said. Mm -hmm. And like whenever you were saying that you were showing people and the more that they can accept that something is, you know, what you say it is, the faster that they'll grow. Because a lot of times people take it personally if they get a question wrong because they were trained to in school. If you got an F on your test, then you're a loser now, you know. Um, but um, definitely, I, I feel that if you yell or you, you know, raise your voice about a question, you're knocking walls down. You're not attacking the person for their question. Uh, yeah, I don't know if, if I come off as that angry passionate about what I do, and uh, sometimes, uh, almost a lot of times, really, passion seems to uh, break through walls uh, much more effectively than the, you know, I'm trying to get you to understand, you know, this type of thing. <laughs> uh, I find that that never works, because people are so inundated with their disease and their attachments that you really, I really have to pull those attachments aside to get my point across to them. The consciousness in there. So when I'm going passionate, that's really what it is. It's just really a focus on your core, you know, on you know, your higher consciousness. Because so many things are around people, and so many influences, dense influences around individuals, that it really takes. You know, it's like uh, having a snowstorm going on, and you need one of these huge, you know, trucks with a plow in front to like just, you know, really like push all that stuff aside. And hopefully, you know, it, uh, it doesn't get covered up before the client gets to really, really get the gist of what I'm talking about. Mm. So, Please correct me if I'm wrong, if this has something or nothing to do with this. But I noticed, like, I used to think that if, if people cried during sessions, that, that it's a safe place. But actually realizing that density uses crying as manipulation to try to, one, eat up the time that you could, that you could do, you know, 
deleting them and uh, or to try to manipulate you into going with whatever they want for the session that isn't actually going to benefit them. Does that? Yeah, well, there, <clears throat> yeah, there are a number of uh, reasons I mean, that individuals will uh, end up finding themselves you know, crying about something. And it's not because, you know, I slap them around or anything like that. Uh, usually it has to do with something that's very, very um, intimate and very, um, uh, let's just say, sensitive within their psyche that's, that's coming to the surface. And, you know, crying does feed the density. And that's another, uh, what Ms. A was saying, that there are numerous times, and as a male in this world, uh, you know, been around a while and have, you know, various you know, relationships, uh, too often it's been used as a way to either distract from something or detract from something or just, you know, literally stop something in his, in his tracks of moving forward mm -hmm. or trying to find a, a soft spot on me because that's one of the things that I, when, ever since I was a kid, you know, you see movie and the woman starts crying, no, 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 crying, you know, like, you know, I'm supposed to just uh, stop what I'm doing because of this expression. So that's why I, I see exp that expression as also this, you know, feeding density. Also, it's used to manipulate at times. Sometimes, you know, folks, it's just coming up and they don't understand why it's coming up. Uh, so, you know, it's not just one exact thing or, or two, you know, two things, but I'm all about getting the information across. So if someone's crying, I'll just wait. Yeah. Or if uh, in the past I had uh, a client who would just work her way up to a cry. Oh, yeah. You know, just start, and I'd say, oh, here it comes. And before you even said anything, that was her introduction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> her introduction would be like that. And I said, okay. And I realized uh, that this person was being manipulative, and after a certain number of, of uh, sessions, which kind of slipped up, she actually came clean about the whole thing. You know, that she was really, literally just, I don't know why. So you're paying for sessions, you know, why do you want to waste your time like that? But it's the density that's in her that was at the wheel that was literally thinking it was just funny, uh, like they were hurting me. I said, you're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself if you allow these things to you know, be at the wheel and go along with it. And she literally was going along with that game. And then at some point, you know, I guess my whatever, as they say, I have like a truth serum in it going <laughs> on there, where all of a sudden, and I've had this happen completely, just boom, all of a sudden, I got to come clean. I said, good, now you're coming clean, now you can start your journey. Mm. But ah. sometimes those things interfere with the person's journey, you know, it interferes with uh, them actually, you know, just absorbing the information. So there's a number who have said that they, you know, they're with, at the, you know, listening to the forums, they're on the forums, but they don't remember certain things. That's why, you know, we um, had it where, you know, it's on, uh, on the website, and you know, put it online uh, for you so that you can go back and actually re listen. So there's a lot of good information in these forms. Mm -hmm. you know, but there are times where individuals uh, said that noise would just start to, and, you know, this is during sessions, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when they're just having to do with sessions, that I would start to get deep into what's going on with them. And they're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, you know, sometime later, you know, once we started using some other. Um, Techniques. I started using some other techniques to break through the noise. I said, "Oh wow, for the first time I can hear." I said, "All this time you weren't hearing." He said, "Yeah, we well, started getting some deep stuff. But all this noise was going, and I had no one hear anything." So again, that goes along with why I will go into the passion zone and just be very, very forceful as to how I'm delivering the information. So I don't know if I can get that off. I just did a, a no, circle. no. Thank you for everything that you shared. Um, that's. I, I can't say anything more on that. I, I'm just going to go on to the beginning, if that's okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, for the first thing was she, Chihiro had, had a card that she got from a friend at school when she got a bouquet of pink flowers. And on the card, if you read the subtitles in Japanese, it says, good luck, Chihiro, we'll meet again. But if you listen to the English dub, it says, I'll miss you, Chihiro, your best friend, Lily. You know, and that has a different flavor also and it encourages, um, I you know, what is it, reminiscing and reminiscing missing and, feeling, and sadness. Uh, yeah, or feeling guilty about leaving or something, you 
the yeah. mountains. You know, um, and usually when I've had that in the past, usually someone, you know, uh, feels like they're trying to make me feel guilty about you know, uh, relocating. Uh, you know, because on the West Coast in the United States, the East Coast, and inevitably somebody when I'm getting ready to move to a new destination, someone says, "I don't miss you." You know, even some people, "Why do you have to go?" You know. Uh, but I like the fact that the you know uh, the actual subtitle, which again you don't really know because unless you speak you know fluent Japanese, even whether the subtitle is All right, yeah. as well. You know. <laughs> Uh, but I like the fact that uh, she said, you know, um, you know, we'll meet again. Yes. Instead of like, oh, 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 said, well, good, good luck. Your train, yeah. And we'll meet up sometime along while I'm doing my journey. Yeah. Like almost like good luck, Chihiro was like, I hope, hope it goes well. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll meet again. Yeah. <laughs> I was so like, this guilt, you know, yeah. like a little bit of guilt thing when people yes. talk about I miss. I was your best friend. Yeah. And you left me. Oh, well, you know, there's no more people. You have to deal with individuals that you know, either you know, uh, considered friends or even family units, who will use that. You know, I haven't talked to you in a while. I miss you, and generally, you're they, you know, they are the ones that are causing you to not want to deal with them. You know, or not want to talk to them that much. But you know what they're saying. I miss feeding on you. you know? So anyway. Yes, Chief. And so the next example, so the mom says, wow, this is quite a ways out of town. I'll need to go shopping in the next town. And it, the father unit says, or the, the father in, unit in the movie says in Japanese, it'll be great once we get used to it. But then the, West, uh, the English translation says, you'll just have to learn to like it. You know, it has a totally kind of different feel, and you, you kind of make an assumption about the difference. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, love it or lump it. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, totally yeah, different. The attitude. actual subtitle is like, yeah, put more you know, gentleman that. Yeah. Know, get used to it, you know. They made the mom a little whinier, too, in English. Like, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. Japanese, she was a little bit less whiny. Yeah. So, um, like, and also in the Japanese version, it says, I like my old school. And then she just like kind of scooted out and stuck her tongue out, but she didn't say anything else mm. in the Japanese version. But then in the English version, it's going to stink. I like my old school. You know, it's already kind of a mantra. Yeah, so some, some, uh, yeah a little more intense negativity, mm. you know, uh, up there, like, you know, she's already predicting that she's not going to enjoy herself, you know, or her, her life's going to suck, you know, so. Because then, and then in the next scene, uh, the uh, not next scene, but the mom's like, She's like, uh, Chihiro realizes that she squished her flowers. And um, she's like, Mom, I died. Uh, and they're dying. And she's like, uh, in the Japanese version, it says, no wonder the way you clung to them. Just a little water when we get there, and they'll perk right up. But in the English version, I told you not to smother them like that. We'll put them in the water when we get to the house, when we get to our new home. It just has a different flavor. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> oh no, it's not. It's not. It's like what I guess. You know what, Chief? That's my own experiences projecting. Like I, I noticed that something that I need to not do is project my own life onto a movie or you know onto any experiences. So I've experienced the mother nagging in that way. You know, I told you to do this. I told you to do that. Like expecting you to remember everything. So then I projected it on this movie. So you're well, right. In this yeah. Movie. Well, I would say that that everyone who watches movies at some point they are projecting their themselves you know into that movie they're you know in other words how you interpret the movie uh it's like um you have to get off of this movie um there's been a few folks have seen them that you know the new matrix film and um one you know some would say that it really is not a good movie it's, you know it's doesn't make much sense. Uh, then there's a you know some who you know, who, you know more uh, accepting of whatever they, they, they thought that the directors were trying to do. Then there are those who just really just thought it sucked bad. You know? But again, each person they're 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 looking at it from their standpoint or what they got out of it, how it made them feel, or how it influenced them. And one of the things I noticed with those reviews that we were looking at the other day. Um, all of them went to the first one. Yeah. Said, that's the one. <laughs> and then the ones who were into the sequels, they said, but that's the one. And then they put the other ones in, in different orders or something, you mm -hmm. know, like the, the sequels. And uh, I even mentioned 
And it looks Anim yeah, like Animatrix, which I you know, which I had done that mm -hmm. DVD years ago. And Animatrix was really good. I liked it better than the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> and the other person, you know, uh, one of the individuals who were, were uh, writing their little review uh, said pretty much this, you know, uh, the same thing. But aside from that, we just were, okay. you know, we're dealing with the okay. you know, uh, spirit of the way, but I, I felt like that needed to. Yeah. Um, so then, um, so she kind of complains that her first bouquet is a farewell bouquet. Mm -hmm. And then, um, the, then, the, in the Japanese version, the mother says, come on now, behave yourself. It's a big day for all of us. Kind of like, you know, we're all experiencing getting used to a new place. So, you know, don't, no need to complain. Mm -hmm. And then in the English version, it's like, quit whining. It's fun to move to a new place. It's an adventure. It was more like a, a, telling her it's about, I was kind of, I, I just thought that it was very interesting because Japan is very group oriented and how in the in the Western world is very individualistic and I, I, I'm just looking at the difference of it. Okay. And then the next thing was at the beginning, um, oh, so they keep keep going and they get lost and they're almost, they, the, the father unit is like driving quite quickly and they're kind of worried that they're, um, that he's going to get them more and more lost, and they pass by some shrines, and the little uh, the they talk about the little houses, and on, in the Japanese versions they say they're shrines, people pray to them, and in the English version they say they're shrines, and some people think little spirits live there. So that's that. Do you um, is there anything you want to say about that about Thailand or anything about well, spirit houses? Well, uh, one of the things in uh, you know Caribbean countries and <clears throat> is a, an awareness of the other side. You know? Therefore, uh, in, like, you know, Thailand probably mentioned it before that uh, it's not unusual to find spirit houses in front of houses, and you know, and not just in Jews, you know, there's a understanding that there is the other side, and there are things that <clears throat> will interact with you from the other side. The spirit houses are primarily to appease those uh, spirits who are on the other side. So. Um, I was saying with, you know, with Japan, they, you know, they're very much aware of those realms. Uh, but I don't know exactly where it started in the West, where they started, uh, you know, like chiseling away at this realization that there's more dimensions than this one out there. Uh, and so when I was you know, growing up in the States, um, you know, where I grew up, they had a very much an understanding that the other side was uh, was real, but the system was always throwing, you know, that you're, you're crazy or you know I don't believe in ghosts and all this. You know, just really proudly pumping you know, pounding into it. I don't believe, you know. So yeah, you know, proud to be close-minded, literally. Uh, so um, one of the things again, uh, I have to admit with uh, even the fact that I actually like anime too. Uh, for obvious reasons, I can watch it like I would, you know, would watch it in the past. But they dealt with various aspects of this realm, and they included the other realm with it. And that's one of the things I liked about a lot of Asian, uh, you know, uh, what they consider fantasy type uh, films, and, and uh, you know, and so on. And even not so fantasy type films will have those aspects in, you know, in them. And not in the sense like horror movies, even though Japan. Uh, definitely uh, has you know horror movies, and quite interesting ones as a matter of fact. You know quite uh, effective ones. Uh, I don't know if anyone has seen like you know Ringu or The Grudge. I think The Grudge is it called The Grudge or something the like ring? that. Well, they both had to do with you know oh, okay. with ghosts and curses and things like mm -hmm. that. Which you know I look at it from a very real standpoint, and not like oh my goodness, you know it's like, wow it's interesting. And I look at how they portray the other realms. So even if uh, someone even in, here in, in Thailand, there are individuals that, no, no, I don't believe in those. Don't believe in but then you will find out, you know, later that, oh, they, they surely do. And, uh, you know, someone around them associated with them said, yeah, but the night we were in the house and we saw, like, you know, a, a ghost cat walk through the house and, you know, and so-and-so got really freaked out or whatever. So, again, uh, I like the fact that uh, as a culture, they haven't been so affected 
by what was coming down uh, from the, uh, the West that they would just abandon, you know, their their own understanding of of the realms, you know, and even though a lot of the things that they um, that they you know uh, what should I say worship definitely come from some very very dense places as well. So there's an intermixing of nature, which is really very very light, with this other very very dense stuff. <clears throat> so, thank you. Right? So as um, the father unit keeps driving, he almost runs into uh, what is called what Doso Jin statue. It has two faces, that particular one closest to the where it opens up into what looks like a theme park. Uh, but there are several of these Doso Jin along the way, and Chihiro no notices them all. Yeah, uh, well, the thing is, yeah, the kid is obviously to start to sense that she has something going on, like she was sensitive uh, earlier on in the movie. In the Doso Jin, uh, they're supposed to be protective uh, you know, icons. You know, then, uh, for travelers, I believe. Uh, yes, and, travelers yeah. or people. Um, sometimes it just ha has a specific um, use or specific like meaning, protecting the even uh, horses that ca carry, um, you know, packs or like weight around, even that specific. Yeah, travelers, so, children, they have yeah. some for children as well. Yeah, so they've been around for like, you know, thousands of years, you know, uh, these types of, um, you know, um, icons. And, uh, and also, <laughs> They use Sama at the end of uh, the name, which means God or a deity. So they believe in you know in multiple deities as well, and that there's a deity of this, there's a deity of that, and you find that a lot of cultures you do research that uh, a lot of uh, cultures have you know uh, more than one deity or, or what's called one with more than one God. But I think that's an interpretation from the West. Uh, I think there. Are, um, sense of it is that deities are, you know, are definitely something they consider to be protective entities, but not in such a sense that they're like the god of gods or whatever. With some of the uh, more, um, I'd say, uh, Western religion, or Westernized religion, I would say as well. Because even Islam, I believe, is with uh, you know Allah. You know? Mm -hmm. So they're going to one, you know, deity. So again. Okay, so um, then the the building they realize is new, is new or new looking, or it's 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 been abandoned though. And you were talking, Chief, about like abandoned buildings, and they're they were just built, and then there there's no one living in them, but there actually is things living there that they can't see. Yeah, well, with uh, approaching that. Um, there are times uh, I've agreed, and I've experienced uh, and called on uh, a few of those these types of cases here in Thailand, where they uh, there was development for these houses because you know they you know, you know, agreed to make money off of these you know, new houses, and so they bring monks in to uh, get permission primarily to build there, and you know with a certain donation to the temple. And I found that there were monks who were just like, you know, if they were asked what was on that land <clears throat> to, um, you know, that, to have permission to build, there would be a number of times that what was there would say no. So they would just go ahead and tell the client anyway that, yeah, we got to go ahead and so on and so forth. And after they built these places and people moved in, uh, you know, they call that their individuals having a problem in a certain area, and it's just like a number of people. And they usually would start with the older you know, folks, the more infirm individuals, would end up having a problem. And they want to find out that, you know, whatever uh, was in music content, uh, nah, sometimes it's something that's in like one of these ancient trees that is not happy about what's going on. Also, just the fact that they have to lob down all these, you know, all these trees in order to, you know, set up these houses. And so I would come in, and I wouldn't. Uh, I would literally, in a situation like that, I'm very empathetic with, uh, you know, with the Nas because they're really into nature and so on. So I'm not, you know, I don't come in and say I'm going to beat you down unless, you know, they're trying to be a big pain in my ass. I will, I will uh, negotiate for the individual with 
what's there. And it goes different ways, you know. Um, it's generally successful, but depending on, you know, on the individuals, if they're being uh, not genuine, uh, problems will start to arise again. And then I will look in and generally get in touch with, you know, with who I made the deal with and find out what was going on. But um, now that I get uh, straight off of what we were well, talking about. Well, actually, that. when you were talking about how um, there are entities in, in everything. We have a little, I had a little article that talked about that um, and talked about all the different entities um, inside, a, a, not every single one, but like a variety of different entities that were inside the movie. Do you want me to read that now or do I just Well, continue? I think, you, you know, uh, with you saying that, I realized that we're, we're going with, you said that, the, you know, the building he thought was an ancient building, it, it was, you know, I think in the, in the anime, it does look like the taste peeling and so on. And yeah. So it's not so yeah. new. And I forget when the movie was made, but he, he uh, I don't know if uh, that was an accurate um, translation where he said that, oh, they were building all these amusement parks in the 90s. And then when the economy went south, you know, a lot of these places got abandoned. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, some individuals are compelled to build in places uh, under the guise of density, wanting you know, uh, you know, a structure in that area. Uh, there are stories even uh, having to do with like, in, in uh, old Europe, where uh, someone would see you know uh, Mary Magdalene show up in the middle of the woods or something like that, and she would tell them you know go to your your uh, either town minister and tell them that they should construct you know, a, um, not a temple, but a, you know, an altar, like deal you know, in this particular area. And if they were ready to check, and they would even did the, like dousing, whatever, you find that as an energy spot, usually like a cross section of, of ley lines, where they're asking them to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, put this thing here so that people would find this location because they knew that they were trained to pray to these, you know, things that they've never met and literally just get food from these individuals. And so every so often they would do something they would consider a miracle where uh, they would, you know, Mary Magdalene would show up, you know, or the statue would start to cry or something like that. And, you know, they get that news out there and boy howdy, you know, got a conga line of people willing to feed that energy to it, you know, in hopes that they're gonna get something that's called a miracle. And you were saying that, you know, density's end game is to end Dunya, Gaia, Earth. So the whole point of building a structure like this, like if, if this was to symbolize that, because Zanib, not Zaniba, Yubaba is the, you know, the leader or the so-called like ruler of this bathhouse, this whole area. She's, if, if, if it was going along with that symbolism of draining Dunya, that would be how, where density would come and rejuvenate themselves, you know, take in the energy mm -hmm. and then leave. Yeah, because he does say something about the, they come to uh, re, re, yeah. re energize. I don't know if you yes. use that word, but more or less like to re energize. So they come and they tap into <gasps> into into the lay line, into the you know, into that vortex. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a kind of a kind of a, a little bit I guess a humorous discussion as to where did the you know where was the border uh, line, uh, you know, between uh, them, you know, uh, getting to this little building and getting to the bathhouse, you know, uh, you know, where did the other dimensions start? But they overlap, you know. And one of the things I know just from the experience that, uh, which he portrayed very accurately, as the sun went down, the other world came, you know, alive. And you know, had personal experiences with, you know, uh, you know, living in a rural area where I, I had, you know, uh, my house in, in the states. And the sun would come, start to come down, and things would start to come out of the out of the woods, out of the shadows of the woods, towards the house. And a certain individual, <laughs> uh, uh, sibling, sister sibling, would sit there with the daughter unit, and she said, "Okay, time to go." And daughter unit said, "What's up?" He says, "A lot of stuff coming out of the woods. Let's get in the house now." And they were literally—it's it's like you know, Dracula or something—that they, you know, uh, certain ones wouldn't come in the house, but she would walk past, you know, one of the you know the huge windows, 
and we see them out there standing out there looking in. You know, it's creepy enough, but it's not as creepy as it sounds once you really understand what they're about. So anyway, um, so sometimes individuals will uh, will not pay attention to what's in you know on the land, and just for the money, they'll just go ahead and tell these guys to build it anyway, and then it ends up becoming a haunted place. And there's some uh, buildings and areas here in Thailand and like that. Uh, you know, there's one apartment, uh, not it was a hotel, and uh, for the whole time I've been there, it's, it's still, it's, you know, standing. But uh, someone uh, who was a local, who was a seer, a psychic, uh, and asked me if I would go up there with her, and I did. And yeah, it was pretty thick with the, you know, with entities, and you can tell just the history of the place where ley lines ran and so on and so forth. As soon as you walk into, you know, like this, that, that's like a, it really like, it should be abandoned, but you know, people have been in there, kids are graffitiing and so on and so forth. But you go in there and you get maybe about, oh, maybe about five yards or more in into this property. And there were all these little altars. And the majority of them had children's toys. Which means these are the kind of ghosts that these folks were seeing, you know, on that property in that area, and they're trying to appease these, you know, these spirits. Mm -hmm. But it goes into some really, you know, uh, pretty intense and you know, nefarious type stuff. Uh, but that's not what we're, we we're talking about. We're going to be reviewing. <laughs> well, <laughs> one of the questions, Chief, was that at night, do things change like in the movie? I know that there's been Korean dramas that I've seen uh, parts of, and other movies where. For example, in the daytime, it looks like a shabby hotel, but at night it becomes this very in intensely expensive looking hot hotel, and it's um, owned by literally a ghost <coughs> in this Korean drama. But they were asking, is this is this normal for things to transform at night? Yeah, it's uh, again, you're sharing dimensions, you know, uh, for some reason. And that's why also the moon is in play, you know, and we talked about that and being an artificial satellite and just the fact that it's just so weird that it doesn't really, doesn't rotate. Uh, but even uh, things having to do with um, issues around what's that's been going on, it's not really an issue anymore with my vision, that at night I would be able to see more than I would be able to see during the daytime. Yeah. Of the level one world, mind you. I see, oh, you have no idea what I've seen with my vision like this, but the level one or, you know, what everyone else is seeing, I, you know, at night, and not every time, but at night, the vision would clear up more for whatever reason. And it has to do with energy, you know, so whatever the vibration is. So there are individuals who are very sensitive and they can walk into an area and feel something. It's just like, you know, like a Trujillo. She could feel something, you know, it wasn't like she's just a little scary cat. She was really, you know, that character was really feeling something. And I think that he, uh, Maizaki was actually portraying that from the realization that he understands that things do other realms. Because he does a number of films that have to do with the other realms, and I really like his portrayal. And that there are a number of things that he portrays that people actually do see. Oh! <laughs> Where that little purge coming up. Um, um. So again, um, we're going to just, you know, with the, uh, the uh, talking about ley lines, energetic ley lines, and when Shiro, you know, uh, followed her parents, uh, which is another thing having to do with uh, being entranced and things like that. But anyway, uh, after the, you know, um, Haku comes across her and tells, you know, says, what are you doing? You need to get out of here before the sun goes down. And, you know, it's kind of too late because the parents are already turned into pigs. And so, you know, the sun's <laughs> gone down. Next thing you know, that, 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 uh, that. What, what do you call look, it? what looked like a riverbed turned into well, a lake. Well, the riverbed, but then it was like, you know, they have this grassland or whatever yeah. you know, it's called grassland. Yeah. But anyway, like, um, yeah. The plains or something? Yeah, it's like a plain of, of grass there. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And, you know, next thing you know, all the way from the edge of, you know, where they were there, where they were you know, eating at the restaurant, or, you know, to the old building was water, mm -hmm. which means a massive ley line, yes. you know. So 
it's almost like that uh, story about crossing the river Styx or something like that, you know, which uh, has some validity to it. Maybe it's about crossing the river Styx and people would uh, think, does that have any religious connotations? Uh, yes. Like that. But crossing from, you know, the so-called living into, you know, into the, in the land of the dead. Mythology as well, but mythology is a bit religious. Yeah. Everything's religion, you said. Chief. Well, everything, yeah. Everything <laughs> basically is, is religion based. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you were t you were talking about how density likes to travel through, you know, th by water ways. Uh, there's other ways they can travel, but um, it was cool that in the movie they showed like um, a ferry boat where entities were traveling. Um, these are they're exiting the ferry and not only were they riding across on the ferry, there were some that were just climbing out of the water and they were like shadow people. Yeah, and it seems like there's quite a few shadow people or some who were shadows and then would come into more of a solid look, I believe. Um, yeah, yes. The and, ones who had the mask. Um, yes, the ones who had a mask, when they were on the ferry crossing over the water, they were invisible except for their cloak, their, their mask, and their hat. Or what looks like a hat, mm -hmm. some kind of headdress, and then as soon as they passed over the ramp that the boat um, extended, then you could see what they looked like. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of uh, the, um, the, the the spirits or whatever and entities are based on uh, actual Japanese folklore. Uh, he did say that he created some of his own, uh, you, know, uh, you know, for the movie as well. But uh, Mizei went about looking at, uh, you know, looking these up, and there's actually names for the majority of these things. Yes. Uh, so. Do you want me to get into that, or? No, we don't have to get into that. No. Okay. At this point, that's, you know, that's Okay. Uh, I think we're... Yes, like, because um, there's lots of like different types of entities that are. Um, so this one is the the river spirit, who. Um, who was very, they called it a stink spirit at first. Mm -hmm. They do a really good job of showing the type of disrespect that is prevalent in this realm for uh, consciousness in river form. <laughs> you know, like uh, the, the other r river that was disrespected was Kohaku River, and then that one as well. But um, uh, let's see. The, the next thing that they, the question that they talked about is that the, about people seeing and not seeing. So you were talking about how some people, they see these entities, literally, they see the color of the form and some people just see them as shadows. So there's like different uh, amount of sight that people have for these entities. That was the last part of that particular question. So, so then they end up going through the first building and uh, Chihiro says that the building moans. You were saying that houses, buildings, they take on, they can absorb um, energy and consciousness and take on a life of their own in some t at times. Yeah, there's been you know stories about houses that are you know, literally an entity, you know, and um, and that's not far fetched because things can you know entities can inhabit all kinds of things. So um, with that, also you. Know, you there's a point where she's walking across that field, that's what it was, that, that field towards the, uh, you know, where the food and everything towards the, um, the bathhouse. And there's this gust of wind, like it's pushing them, you know, or pushing her anyway, you know, uh, towards, you know, the bathhouse. Yes, and she said, Chihiro is like, um, in, she's very repeating she's repeating over and over that she doesn't want to go in it gives her the creeps mm -hmm. so like in terms of maybe she can see and sense things while her parents cannot yeah they're just totally oblivious and totally just ignoring her you know and, and uh, which happens you know a lot with a lot of uh young kids and, and parents would think well with this one these guys just seem like they were just in their own world they didn't really want to you know uh, register her concerns uh some parents are just afraid of what the kids see the point where sometimes you know they just tell the kid you know you're creeping me out or weird or whatever <laughs> because you know, the kid wants to like share you know there's something you know that comes in the room and you know, stares at me or whatever you know uh, but with what's going on with all these uh, you know cameras security cameras and so on and so forth they've been catching a, a whole lot of that stuff and I would say more of it's being caught because of the, you know what's called the veil coming down between the dimensions. So there are certain characters in this movie that look like some of the characters that you see on some of the videos uh, on YouTube 
uh, and I think No Face is one of those. Yes. Yeah. And there's, um, you know, there's numerous YouTube videos with these types of entities with, the, you know, like the white mask face or whatever, mm. the black cloak, cloak. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, so the next, they, there was like, uh, they were, you know, you were talking, you, you were talking about how they ate the food in the spirit realm, and you were talking about how. <laughs> You know, in the movie, it was cute, you know, that some of the food turned your pit to pig and some of them didn't. Like, you know, the little red little ball that uh, Haku gives Chihiro. But in reality, you shouldn't eat things on the other side <laughs> because it's not good. Yeah, well, most people would say, well, I don't know, I'm eating anything from the other side. But it goes along with just eating things, you know, just randomly. And so, you know, folks are akin to going to restaurants. So, so you're going to have to just discontained, you know, because whatever that is that, you know, pushes folks to still want to eat out or whatever, is you know, it's stronger than the desire to just like, oh, I'll just, you know, cook for myself. And sometimes it's just more convenient uh, to folks, you know, seemingly more convenient to, you know, just go in a restaurant and eat. When in, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> well, you know, something. Um, which, uh, I, I guess going back to uh, the parents, and it's just kind of funny because they show them the father. He's kind of like a little, got kind of a bit of a, you know, paunch there, and he's like sniffing around like a little animal. Yeah, you know, he can like, smell where the direction smell is. That. And it's almost like as soon as he smelled it, it's like he got you know entranced or something. Mm. Like something took over. It's like an attachment. I would say it would be an attachment that's like you know, you know, don't you want to eat? You know. And so, next thing you know, there's nothing this kid could say. It was ever going to get them to go back to that, you know, to that car. And then they go in, and he's finding all kinds of, you know, there's no one there to, uh, you know, to greet them or whatever. Ah, that's okay. We'll pay after we, you know, stuff our faces. Which also, this is really very, very inconsiderate. Because you know, mm -hmm. it could have been like a wedding banquet or something like that, <laughs> you know. But they're in there just you know, stuffing their faces. And... The way that they showed it is like uh, some individuals that have known in the past. Uh, one of the men's group had a few guys who were concerned about their weight and so on. And then there was this tell me about they want to lose weight and so on. I said, okay, well, we can work on that and you know, whatever. Then invite them to my house at dinner. And literally, one guy, the, you know, his wife came and had to grab a pot away from him because he's going to eat everything up from everybody. So it's like they go into a trance. Something takes over, and he forgets everything that he's, you know, that he said about his concerns about his weight and so on. Mm -hmm. So I saw that in, you know, in this uh, th this part of the, of, the, of the animation, where it just seemed like they were just, you know, controlled by something. Especially the father and the lead, controlled by something to the point where whatever's in there just, just, you know, eat this, eat, 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 and then. You know, of course, they start turning into pigs. Then this thing with a warded arm and the, you know, the big fly swatter or whatever the hell that thing was, and just starts, you know, beating them down. But that kind of seems like an extreme. But years ago, and I might have mentioned it before in some other forum, uh, was reading a series of accounts that was collected by a, a, you know, this, uh, a good individual, and he taught. He has, uh, there were more than a few stories. In these accounts, because he did it chronologically, <clears throat> having to do with before a lot of electrical, you know, wires and things were put up, that there were the older folks. Uh, and in this particular story, uh, a girl's grandmother told her not to eat anything from anything from the other realm. So they already were pretty much, you know, aware that there's other realms. It's not, you know, hasn't been told that this is, you know, this isn't real or so on and so forth. So, you know. She's out uh, tending, I forgot if it was like <clears throat> cows or, or some you know, livestock or something, or goats or sheep or something. And this uh, kind of nicely dressed, but kind of oddly dressed individual approaches her and invites her to, a, you know, to a, a, some festival thing. Because also he's good looking, so, you know, that's always one of these things that get you know, certain you know, females or certain men, you know, in trouble. You know, it's like, wow, you're a good looking. I'll follow her anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and next thing you know, there's see, they're walking into a side of a mountain. You know, when there's a doorway, there's, that's odd. They walk in, 
and then she turns around, there's no door. But there's this, you know, this festivity going on, and there's all this food and drink and so on. And <clears throat> everybody's being really, really nice to her. And she sits at the table and they say, Here, break tea, eat, eat. And she, and she goes, No, no, thank you, I'm okay. They say, no, 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 you gotta eat. You know, and they keep persisting, but she keeps not doing it. And, you know, finally, uh, they, they are not so nice anymore, you know. And then in the end, they end up just like booting her out, you know, you know, kicking her out. So it wasn't one of these like, you know, uh, Hollywood horror films that, you know, ah, and they just like hate her. But just, you know, like she's not going to play, she's not going to play ball with us. And they kick her out. So some of uh, eating uh, certain foods from, uh, from certain types of entities or whatever will lock that person into that realm. Or again, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you, but well, when I was a kid, it was not uncommon to hear about, uh, you know, usually women were the ones who were doing the cooking, you know, it was like the way I grew up, the father was, you know, I go out, work, work, woman cooks, you know, and all that. And <clears throat> numbers, uh, I mean, stories about uh, women who want whatever, to, uh, more control over their, their husbands, or a husband that seems to be like floundering or whatever, you know, in, in his interest. So they would tell them to do certain things to the food and putting spells and so on and so forth. So this is something that was very, very common back then. And it's pretty common right now too, to tell you the truth. Maybe it's not talked about that much, but it still is you know, pretty common as well. So how food is used to uh, influence, to uh, capture, to control. You know, literally control. Huh? Uh, chill, you know, as well, mm. a weaken, you know, even to the point where uh, these individuals, these women, they call black widows, who would marry a guy and then she would slowly poison them over over like three years with just a little bit of arsenic in his, in his food. And what it looks like was just the fact that his health is failing over time. And then next, you know, out of the picture, then she moves on to the next, you know, the next sucker. So anyway, yes, she... um, you know, that, but the food, you know, that literally what comes up with that. Okay, thank you. So um, Chihiro is quite polite, and she d she's telling the parents, you know, I don't want any food. They're going to get mad at us. Yeah. And, you know, they encouraged her at first. And the weirdest part is, like, the stuff that, that they're eating, like you said, they were under a spell because it already looks like mystery meat. They, you know, it, it, it has some of it has no bones, but it looks like meat. And you know sausage things, and then they just turn into pigs. Yeah, so some of like animals. They, they really, you know, yeah, they, some of them looked like kind of like <clears throat> cats or something, mm -hmm. uh, giant fish heads, and and variety of things. And they weren't even thinking probably yeah. by then because I've actually met people who have, when they eat, they snort like pigs. So you know, you were saying there was some kind of entity in them that was pig-like. There's yeah. a lot of people think it's crazy, but there's a lot of consciousness mm -hmm. that don't that have things in them that are not what you would think was human. Yeah, they're you know, about in, you know, one of the ways it worked had to do with certain, you know, so, uh, so it's not straight across the board. You know, I don't want really anyone to be like, you know, my, my excuse for, you know, um, not, you know, uh, watching how much I consume has to do with this attachment. There are times it's definitely attached, but there's times that it has to do with some other stuff that's going on. You know, just, uh, uh, you know, individuals uh, desire to just uh, comfort themselves from all the other crap that's going on in the, in the film. And so they just find this is a comforting thing, you know, to just consume. Yeah. But <clears throat> for me, I just say, look, if you want to be around in the game and you want to actually have a quality of life, you really, you know, it's a good thing to just try to observe that and make changes. Because in the end, um, you know, it, it wears on an individual. Uh, that you know, that habit or those attachments that will just wear on an individual, and it's just really a funny thing because there are people who like, yeah, I'll quit all this stuff, I'll quit that, I'll quit that, you know. Well, you know, quitting, you know, you know, a lot of mass quantities or whatever. But, um, okay, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, you know, I don't eat that much or whatever. But in the end, when you corner them, there's a theme that comes out very vicious. How dare you tell me I can't comfort myself? And that's usually the thing that's in you know in there that you know that is driving them to do these things. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, Chief. And so they go to the bridge, just like you said, and uh, Chihiro meets Haku. And Haku is like, why are you here? Because he recognizes her immediately. And she just thinks, oh, okay, I'll leave. But she thinks it's strange that he was so ve vehement about her leaving because he understands the realm. And you're talking about how people don't understand this realm and how serious it is and how it is a battle for their consciousness. And they just kind of take it lightly. Yeah, and I think that was maybe the first sign, but uh, there was so much going on with her character, which I like how he portrayed all that. Yeah. You know, the chaos that was going on, her parents were you know, being weird, and then she's in this weird place that she really you know, gets really you know, creepy vibes from, and then you know this guy comes out of nowhere, but also he called her by her name yes. too. Uh -huh. She said, "How do you know my name?" But he, you know, he remembered her from somewhere else, but yes. he couldn't remember. Himself. You know, himself. Yeah. You know. Um, so, you know, that was, I thought that was really, really quite well portrayed. Well, I got goosebumps when you said he could remember her, but he couldn't remember himself. And mm -hmm. you're talking about how consciousness um, are forced to forget a lot of things. Yeah. And that to remember yourself as consciousness is essential to escape the matrix if you cannot. Yeah. You stay. Yeah. And even, uh, you know, taking a little further uh, with individuals who have uh, self hate issues. And that comes from a lack of remembrance of, you know, of where you, of, you know, what you really are, where you came from. You know, you are consciousness first, and, you know, and uh, there are times that individuals say, yeah, consciousness first, and consciousness first, but it's like a weak mantra. Maybe they're trying to convince themselves that they are, but not really buying into it. Because, you know, how I know there's a hole in it is I ask you, do you like yourself? And they will pause. It's almost like they're afraid to lie about that. Some people say, I love you. you know, say, if you go out grandstanding like that, I say, let's put that arm out there. Let's muscle test on that because I'm not feeling you. And boom, oh, you know, so some folks will fake it, but some, you know, they don't even think about it that I don't like myself. You know, some think about it every day how much they don't like themselves. So on a, you know, on a journey like this, you really have to at least get to the point where you say, it's okay for me to be a conscious, you know. It's okay for me to, uh, you know, try to reconnect to something so that I will feel better about myself. I, I won't feel, you know, and not at the expense of others, mind you, either. But I can genuinely feel that, you know, I have a right to be here in the world, in the universe, literally. You know, uh, this is like, you know, like I said, this is a penitentiary, you know, so. But as a consciousness, it is the mind that keeps you locked in the penitentiary. And it's like, again, another one of these flashbacks from the matrix, a prison for the mind, literally. Mm -hmm. This is how they control everything. They convince, and they just strip you down, and keep stripping you down, keep stripping you down. And we were joking around uh, today, or mm -hmm. I guess I was, about people being wheelie bins. And those, you know, wheelie bins from, you know, that's the British term for, you know, uh, a trashy garbage receptacle, a little big, you know, trash can. Yeah. And literally, <clears throat> they've been turning, every, you, know, you know, all these consciousness on the planet into little wheelie bins and just throwing all their trash in there, you know? And you know, then telling you, oh, this isn't trash. This is very useful stuff. You know? mm. So, well, I want to get enlightened, you know, system. Look in the wheelie bin, you know? Digging through it and so on and so forth, you know, and gum wrappers and so on, you know, and say, yeah, that gum wrapper means something. It symbol, symbolizes something. But anyway, before I get all the way into that. Well, I mean, Chief, you were talking about how uh, people have been turned into wheelie bins, and then when they believe that they're wheelie bins, they become a tool for the system. Yeah, literally. And um, it was, should I go into where they were talking about, uh, you know, the the uh, the soot spirits or the soot sprites being kind of, you know, the little minions of the boiler? Or should I go yeah, well, we, chronologically? Yeah, we can jump around. Jump around? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's, uh, as you know, there's Kamaji and he has his soot balls that work for him uh, because he put a spell on them and he feeds them candy, Konpeto candy. And uh, they... And there's also another example of like minions, they would call them. Uh, Zaniba has these paper dolls or these paper air, uh, birds or something like that that fly around. <coughs> and they are, are the minions. 
and you know if everything is consciousness these consciousness have been uh, conquered enough to where they can you know be enslaved yeah so even what they you know they're showing it in a sense like you know oh these you know uh, these are little sip balls but they are consciousness because they also have little personalities that people realize you know when she uh <laughs> one was having trouble she decided to help him out and the other was like hey a sucker uh, they, you know, there are consciousness, really, you know. Uh, but we were going to say, uh, how do we do with that? Um, you were, I was just talking about how when when someone believes they're a wheelie bin, they're more and more uh, a tool of the system. And, mm -hmm. you know, you were talking about people disliking themselves. It's just them believing what the system tells them, defi defining who they are. Yeah. And I know that over the, over the decades, they really target women with the, you know, don't like yourself. Uh, with all these glamour magazines. I was in the industry uh, for a good number of decades. And a lot of the stuff was just targeting, you know, women to not feel, you know, to feel less about themselves, to feel inferior. And there were these young girls who were looking at these, you know, glamour magazines and so on and so forth and thinking, wow, she's really gorgeous. Look at her, you know, her Barbie, Barbie doll, you know, figure or whatever. And, uh, you know, I knew what they were doing with, uh, you know, Photoshop at that time. But there was actually some, uh, I forgot it was a program that came out some, some years ago, where they were showing what the woman looked in real life, like in real life, and then what she looked like after they put on the cover, and they were retouching, and then, you know, trimmed off a couple inches in the waist, and so on and so forth. And, you know, folks are, are very, very gullible. It's literally like, here's another piece of trash we're throwing in your wheelie bin to make you feel like crap, because you're believing that what they're giving you is real or is honest when it's all fake, you know? And I've seen a lot of this stuff where, you know, in the end, you wouldn't even recognize the, you know, the uh, model if she was on the street without makeup on. And she definitely didn't have that figure that they had created. So again, it's, you know, it's about feeding off of your uh, feeling less than your, you know, uh, less about yourself. Therefore, people who feel less about themselves are not prone to defend themselves. <laughs> They're less prone to fight for themselves if they don't like themselves. So anyway, with that, we'll just... Well, that was definitely what, like, you give, you allow uh, clients in, to use your tools to protect themselves, but because sometimes there's many reasons, but maybe they don't like themselves or don't have respect enough for themselves to fight back with your tools, they just let... Um, anyone, relatives, friends, anybody keep throwing shit in their wheelie, in what they feel is themselves the wheelie bin, mm -hmm. and it just continues the cycle and they become a tool of the system more and more. Yeah, so, you know, uh, with me, I, I, I likened it to me helping you go through all the crap in the wheelie bin and then deleting the stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, so into a self hate, guess what? You know, uh, you may, I may close that lid. And put a lock on it, but mm -hmm. you'll be picking that lock and then opening it up again because that's that part of disrespect for yourself. So mm -hmm. I feel I am a wheelie bin, mm -hmm. you know, and this is what wheelie bins do. We just open up and let, you know, either the local, you know, homeowner throw his crap in there or the whole city, you know, you have those ones that, you know, for public, mm -hmm. you know, trash collection and so on. So that's just another way of looking at it. I always try to find some visual that can click with people to understand what's really going on, and even what you uh, have been convinced to do to yourselves. When you say that, I just think about people who um, like let let den like pe let people um, throw up on them. You know, mm -hmm. let them complain to them, let them tell their secrets too that are going to be a burden. Let them um, uh, whine and be uh, negative towards, or let them even denigrate them. Yeah. And just take it, take it, and that's just letting shit come into the wheelie bin. Yeah, and actually feeling, you know, um, that some individual who calls you every time, you know, you be kind of like, Ugh. but you pick it up. Hello, there you go, wheelie bin. Ugh. So you feel that someone is like, you can take it out of your head. but no, don't answer it. Let them wait. Then be, a, a, be an observant person, be a, an observer. How desperate do they get to want to try to talk to you? 
tells you what they are. Um, uh, I'm gonna probably let's see where it goes before I go to this other. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Um, well, it's interesting because uh, Chihiro ends up running to where she thought she could get back to, um, you know, where they started out at the building that was moaning, and uh, she realized there was a huge lake there, and then she was scared because she could see a so many buildings that were uh, just dormant before is totally lit up like a bustling city or something. And then there's a ferry with entities coming um, off of it or um, and she just starts huddling and like, I just want to disappear. I just want to disappear. And then she starts to disappear. Mm -hmm. And um, you were talking about how consciousness um, can be tuned up by the system to hate themselves so much that they attack themselves, they eat themselves. Yeah, and I mean, people do it all the time. <laughs> It's, it, the, the masses do this, you know, and what makes it kind of uh, difficult for individuals who try to start a journey, you can't look at the masses. All of a sudden, this journey with me is not any journey you've ever been on before. It's, it's not, you know, the, you know, the gum wrappers with some, uh, you know, zodiac sayings or something on it. This is real. This isn't all this, you know, all the, you know, the little tarot cards and the numerology and so on and so forth. Even though something like can maybe talk to you through some of this stuff, but not often, you know. So um, I just uh, kind of got lost. No problem, here. Chief. Um, because she says it's just a dream. It's just a dream. Go away. Disappear. And um, that's what sometimes people feel about the change. They don't want to see the change. They don't want to see the weather. They don't want to see this, you know, the night sky. It's just they want it to go away and be just a dream. But they're living in a dream because they're living in the matrix. Yeah, they want a movie version yeah. of what, uh, you know, which in, in, in turn, they want what density tells you enlightenment is. And the last thing they want to lift you to is enlightenment. That means that. No more food. So, you know, they want the real, but there's so many things. It's like there's so much in your weed, and that is, you know, it's like pulling you in all these different directions. But there's a part of your higher consciousness that wants it. So it does, it will come to me. And that part, they have this tug of war all of a sudden when I start to really open up and tell them what's really going on and can prove it. So it's not like just rhetoric. That I'm, that I'm speaking, it's not, um, in my opinion, you know, and some things I interpret in a certain way because, you know, um, there's no book to tell you other than my book, and my book tells you, you know, where things were when I wrote that book. Things are always evolving, you know, but the book is very, very valid, especially for those who are, want to intro into this realm. Thanks. I don't know if I finished with it, but anyway, we can go ahead. If I forgot something, I'll come back to it. Yes, Chief, thank you. So uh, what was cool is they gave a really good, the movie gave a really great example of what a roach is, because Haku touches her, uh, Chihiro's forehead. You had to get her, to, you know, to set it up that to tell her how to get to the mod. Yes, 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 I um, actually was oh, sorry. about to say that. <laughs> Yeah, I was Sorry. too slow, right? Okay, so anyway, <laughs> he puts his he puts his head and his fingers on her forehead and shows her an image of how to get to the boiler room, a step by step, and you know where where she needs to go. And that's what it was. It's really inf interesting because that's something real on the other side, and um, it happens all the time in chief sessions and things like that. And roads are was the rote was given to her, and she knew she's like, okay, the boiler room. She saw it in her mind as well. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what's really cool about uh, sessions with Chief and with Miss Oracle L. She sees things and then, you know, then whenever she sees things, sometimes she'll say it to me and I'll get an image and it's it's quite fun. And so um, those, the, the whenever that happens, she's like, he's like, okay, I have to go now. So remember, I'm your friend. And then, uh, or, well, actually, I, I forgot to read what the Japanese version said, but anyway, the English version said, I'm your friend. Mm -hmm. And so um, she, she's, she's like, don't leave me, you know, I don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. And I like, I really love the transformation 
or I really enjoy the transformation that Chihiro has in this movie because at the beginning, you know, she's always holding her dad's arm or holding her mom's arm or like even in the beginning when she has a little meltdown and and cries eating food, but in the it, towards the middle and towards the end, she she's like very strong uh, pose that she's making with straight back and she's like like she's had experiences that she's matured a lot and that was really cool. Yeah, because she's gone through rites of passage. And that's one of the things also, <clears throat> some of the other films that I uh, mentioned of Miyazaki, it's uh, a lot of it has the young girls going through rites of passage, it's where they were timid in the beginning, and then they had to face reality. They had, you know, in other words, there was no one to lean on but themselves, and no one to, I mean, to, yeah, for them to depend on but themselves. Even though Haku was helping, he had to be very, you know, we talked about stealth, he had to be very, very stealthy as to how he would help her as to not get himself into hot water. And a number of other characters that were in the movie as well. But the rope uh, thing, you know, uh, is, is definitely, you know, as soon as it is, yep, that's a rope. Because not everything is, you know, verbal or written information. It, uh, it's like, uh, I would say, impression and visual. That's what the communication is impression and visual. So if everyone was going and really tuned into their higher consciousness, supreme consciousness, you know, awareness, you won't have to learn to speak English, you won't have to learn to speak Japanese, you won't have to learn to speak Spanish, you won't have to learn to speak any language, because everyone will be communicating from a universal way of communicating. The density was uh, complaining it. When I could hear them, they're yelling and saying, stop teaching people about the real. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and it was it was really cool because um, Haku's character, you know, he shows a lot of stealth. You know, he, he, is, he is depicted as like a damaged light being because he's being forced to work for density, but he's still resisting in his own way. And he, he tells her, you know, I'm not, I'm not against you, but when he has to do acting, and Chief was saying acting is essential in this realm, using stealth. And, he's, and when she's in the elevator, she tries to talk to him kind of friendly-like, and he's like, you'll address me as Master Haku. You know, it's like, he's pretty much saying, don't talk to me right now. You know? But, you know, she had a little kid, she's like, wow, you're being a jerk, what the hell happens? She's but, like, are there two Hakus? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because, you know, she's naive to, you know, yeah. to the concept of stealth. But, you know, she starts to learn, you know. Yeah. Um, the, the, you know, literally, I felt that the movie reflected this realm, the hard realm, <laughs> you know. It's just that everybody walking around, to tell you the truth, if you really were to see past a lot of people's glamour, I would I would say that there's a lot of them who look kind of like these characters in the movie <laughs> that's behind their glamour. And even just their behavior, you know, just individuals that ha uh, that behave like Ibada, you know. And she just seems very much like people that I've met in the past, who just really, really vicious individuals and very underhanded, you know, and very, you know, egotistical. But there's something else is going to add. That, uh... Oh yeah, and, and speaking of her, she she likes to get in people's face and like try to use intimidation and uh, immediately just insulting them all the time. Yeah, seems like regular people. Yeah, I was going to say one of the things. Also, they were talking about evil spirits or something. And it was like these guys, you know, mm -hmm. or you know, or, and things when <clears throat> you know if you're watching it and you're watching it from the standpoint of what you've learned, uh, you know, about so-called spirits and demons and so on and so forth. What are these demons talking about protecting themselves from evil? You know, so I just felt, in a sense, maybe it was, I don't know what he was thinking, you know, about, but maybe he was being very clever about saying, this is really what people are. <sighs> All these weird, you know, beings and so on. Because <clears throat> she ran into someone who actually um, took a liking to her because she had a certain charisma, and, uh, you know, we know some. Yes. Individuals who like that, yes. where they can go into a zone and you know people can be really really nasty towards other people, but all of a sudden they see this person and all you know and she charms the you know the crap out of them, and next thing you know she's getting what you know <laughs> we get you know certain favoritism. Yes. But uh, so I felt that you know the character, if I was to read it in the in the in the you know, I say the real, but in this how uh, this realm is, I would say the, the kid has some some charisma. 
you know, and even, uh, I don't know if I'm going to uh, go too far ahead, so I'm just going to let you take the helm. And just, sure, you know, Chief. And um, you were saying that this this Chihiro um, character, she's very likable, and you, could, you want to root for her to make it. And what's so cool is that she doesn't sit there and hide. Because that's some people's lifestyle, and I have experienced it myself, just wanting to just sit there and hide and disappear. She's just like, she gets up after she gets help from Haku to stand up. She's just like, you know, I'm, I'm, I need to do this. And she kind of like slowly goes down to the stairs. And even when she's falling and, and um, she still, she still keeps moving. And then, you know, she screams a little bit, but she covers herself because she's learning stealth from her experiences. She's actually observing her experiences and taking that knowledge that she can and imply, applying it to her life. Because when there was some kind of entity that opened the door to smoke a cigarette up above her, she slowly, quietly, like, scoots around the corner. You know, she doesn't, you know, she doesn't give herself away, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that was definitely an essence uh, gathering uh, scene. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the stairs. stairs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, then she finally makes it. And then it was really interested, interesting because the Kamaji character was just like Haku had said. He's going to try to turn you away, but be tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did. So persistent, yeah, guess, but... persistent. Yeah, persistent. Yeah. She has to. She screwed up her nerves to talk to Kamaji. And, he, and she says that she wants a job. And he. he he at first he gives her a lesson and says, "Finish what you start, human." Well, after, well, I think first he just keeps hearing no. Yes. <clears throat> you know he's got enough help with his little, you know, footballs. footballs. <laughs> and then one of the footballs, you know, ends up, I guess, having one of the whatever that stuff was because yeah. it's heavier than coal. Yes. You know, fall on top of him and then she's, you know, you know, lifts it off of him. Yeah. So yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it was. I would say that it was, you know, uh, one of the first lessons. Yeah. Where I said, you know, you know, finish what you start, you know, yes. just like, you know, half-ass, so. Yeah, it was, and she applied that lesson throughout the rest of the movie, which I thought was pretty cool, too. Yeah, and even got a lesson in manners, too. Oh, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, so then after uh, Kamaji teaches her that lesson, um, again, and, he's, and then uh, Lynn comes in. She says uh, she's, you know, giving food for the boiler man. And he tells Lynn that that uh, Chihiro wants a job, and then Lynn ends up uh, helping her out as well. But well, first it was like you know, here's where um, <coughs> Maji was a pretty cool guy, even in, 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 in spite of little gruffness. That uh, she says, "Ah, it's a human. Who is you know, you know, who is she?" She said, "Ah, she's my granddaughter." So he covers for her. Yeah. You know, so uh, I guess just seeing that, you know, when she, he told her to. You know, uh, you know, finish what you start. As heavy as that thing was, she still struggled, and she finished the job. And you know, and he says something that she wants a job. And I think she'll. I think she's. She's. Uh, she'll do fine. She's. A, I think she's a tough she's, little. Girl. Yeah, she's a tough little girl. You know? <laughs> so she was already showing her metal, you know, so to speak. Uh, you know, to his, in his observation of her. Mm -hmm. You know that too. You know, she had to screw up her nerve to talk to this really weird-looking guy. You know, yeah, with yeah, six arms. arms. Where you're and, you know, <laughs> so on. And actually, you know, had to have a nerve to go up there and, you know, interact with them. And she even charmed the sit balls because they were, like, helping her out. Like, yeah, right. don't pick them. <laughs> yeah, it was almost like, you know, because they really, uh, she came off as a really nice kid, mm -hmm. but with a limited, ex you know, experience in her life. Mm. And, you know, so like they said, even the soot balls were like, you know, hey, man, you know, yeah. you know give the kid a break, you know, <laughs> give her a shot. Yeah, you know, give her so. a shot. But she yeah. did have to learn manners because she just was like, it was a new experience, totally new things, learn mm -hmm. how to behave because the Lynn was like, can't you get a yes, ma'am, or a thank you? <laughs> She's like, yes, ma'am. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then that, that was useful to her because when she met you, Baba, she had to be like, uh, yes, ma'am, you know? Yeah. It was kind of, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't have any really you know, real criticism at all about the voice actors, uh, you know, the English voice Very actors. Very nice they did voices. Really, really, you know, yeah. good voices, you know, uh, you know, and good um, expression. Yes, totally. And, you know, with uh, Sin, you know, um, Chihiro, Chihiro, yeah. Chihiro, uh, what they call it, Sin afterwards. Yeah, right? yeah. And um, where, you know, every time she goes, thank you, thank you, you know, and it's like me as somebody raised kids, I'm like, 
<laughs> he's a nice kid, man. You know, he knows how to, you know, lead the light. So, um, you know, if someone said, ah, that's like, nah, man, I, I, I was like, yeah. 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 I like this kid. Because Lynn, Lynn, actually, all the characters actually, uh, you know, some people would think, well, they were gruff at first, but actually that gruffness taught her about the realm because the realm is, was very serious. And if they were to kid glove her or like soft touch, that would not have helped her survive in that realm. Yeah, well, as I said, she would not have survived if she couldn't, like, you know, adapt. And that's another thing about adapting to something new. So when you talk about, you know, you know what I do in the movement, your shamanism, when you're coming in, it's about adapting to something new, you know. And by her, and she was in a very, you know, dangerous situation, you know, as they portrayed it. This is not a dangerous situation. This just has to do with, it's dangerous to the density that doesn't want you to evolve, wants you to expand your horizons, or just primarily seek enlightenment, period. And actually makes you know, strides towards it. Yeah, that's why, Chief. I, I want to. I just definitely want to learn to uh, look forward to your correction. You know, a little bit of toughness is necessary because this realm is freaking intense and and uh, ruthless. Yeah. Um, well, you know, these folks who have gone into the military, military is not really, you know, it's definitely not nice to do. You know, if anything, they break you down and just make you into a football. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. This is about you know breaking it down and making it into, <laughs> into a football. You know, like look, you have this uh, you know all of this universal energy inside of your energy. It's like a little octave wave in most cases. And when you open that up, you're gonna find out that you know that you're capable of so much more than you realize. And things that definitely when you can see where your existence is getting better, that has nothing to do with um, whether you have. Um, Bill Gates money or not, that won't make you happy. Having enough that you, you know, what you need to do what you need to do is definitely a good thing to have, you know, in this realm. But again, uh, we will start to really understand what is really real, what really is what's really beneficial, and not the superficial stuff that you see in media and TV or, you know, in the magazines where they're, you know, targeting young girls to hate themselves by putting airbrushed and uh, Photoshop, you know, women on cover the same. If you don't look like her, you're a fraud. Mm -hmm. so anyway. Thanks, Chief. So, um, <clears throat> so it's funny because Lynn, Lynn uh, actually reacts to her appropriately. She's like, I'm not going to risk my life, you know, just for this random kid. <laughs> and then he's like, come on, I'll give you a roasted moot. And she's like, fine. You know? <laughs> food again. Yeah, food again. <laughs> right, right. So, um, so so um, Kamaji says, you'll have to make a deal with you, Baba. And so the second lesson she learned was, as you said, yes, ma'am, and thank you. And then the boiler man, uh, then even um, Lynn says, hey, you know, you need to thank the boiler man. He's really sticking his neck out for you. And because even you, Baba's like, tell me who helped you, you know, let me know. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't squeal on them either. That was cool, too. <laughs> yeah. um, and then she was a quirky kid in the beginning, like putting her face close to the wall at the elevator and just kind of wandering around looking at the, uh, I mean, not, ele yeah, elevator. And um, and Lynn was like, hey, focus, come on, get over here, kid. You want to lose your nose? You know, she, <laughs> helping the kid, pay attention. You know, this realm is going to eat you up and spit you out if you don't pay attention. Use Chief's tools or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like she was, uh, you know, insulated. Uh, with her life with the parental units, who seem to really, from their portrayal, seem to be just more into themselves, in a sense, you know. And <clears throat> apparently she didn't get any in, anything having to do with the real world. Some will say, well, she's just a little kid, better be a little kid, is it? No, no, no. Because uh, there's a point where certain parents don't know when to stop trying to, you know, you know, make their kid a little kid or keep their kid a little kid, mm -hmm. you know. And again, as uh, like I said uh, some time ago, you know, uh, after, you know, making a mad attempt to raise, you know, a couple of kids myself, you know, with the, you know, someone else, um, I wouldn't do it again <laughs> because, you know, the world is literally like Yubaba's world. <laughs> 
Wow. It's a very dangerous world out there. The number of uh, people who have been molested as children and so on and so forth is, you know, that's, you may think it's a small number, it's a huge number. Because this world was designed to just be extremely dangerous and so on, and they're going to always do something to distract you so you won't totally be able to focus on the subconscious and that other expressions in their journey. You know, let alone, you, you don't know which way you're going, where you're going, and you don't like yourself. And uh, there are individuals who don't like themselves, and they lay that on their children. You know, because a kid looks like them. So why in the hell would you have a kid? What do you think it's going to look like? And uh, Chief, you were talking about how uh, focus in, in, in general, and um, you know uh, this post that you you ins inspired and you gave the words to pandemic or weapon of mass destruct mass distraction, and there are many weapons of mass distraction. Christmas is one, holidays, birthdays, and people think, oh yeah, pandemic is the weapon of mass distraction, but it applies to all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Everything here is designed to keep you from really, uh, I guess, in the, uh, with the Haku and losing his name and then forgetting who he, is, who he was or who he is, you know. And that's literally what's happened to, you know, the masses on the planet. They, you know, they haven't got a clue who they are and where their real true origin is from. So the next thing that happens is they're in the elevator and they have to go from elevator to elevator to get to the top floor where Zinipa is. I mean, excuse me, Yubaba. And uh, the radish spirit shows up and Lynn's like, oh, hello, radish spirit. And then she, you know, she lies to the radish <coughs> spirit. Uh, not, she doesn't lie to the radish spirit. She just tells him kind of to like go away in a nice way. She says, oh, this elevator doesn't go any higher. So you have to take another one. Bye. And then, and then she hears like, he's following us. But you know, she did, she did show her a lesson. This is stealth, you know, use whatever you can say, whatever you can, especially when you're dealing with those who have a much higher density to get what you need to do or get what you need to get and go where you need to go. <laughs> They're saying that, uh, well, you know, in the end, uh, you know, the radish spirit helped her. Actually been, you know, actually ended up being a pretty cool guy. Um, but she didn't know that at first. Yeah, well, again, yeah, she wouldn't know that. You yes. know, that uh, whatever this kid's, you know, charm yeah. was, whatever it is, that, you know, um, like, you know, cute little kid, mm -hmm. you know, I, I would assume it just had something to do with the director or whatever. <laughs> but again, it, it still has to do with her in this realm of confusion. Not only is she in a, in a realm without her parents, mm -hmm. which would be bad enough just as regular people, you know, uh, but she's in this realm where nobody looks like a, you know, a human except for like men mm -hmm. and some of the others. And she doesn't even know what they are because they're, they're, they say they're not human. Yeah. You know? Because they always say human. <laughs> yeah. And they always talk about the smell. Yeah, also, yeah. Funny in the matrix. Like it's in the, the matrix. Smell. Yeah. Well, you did say that the Matrix has a smell, and it's not a good one. Yeah, and there's been other accounts where uh, in the psychic uh, in the past we talked about someone you know coming from the other side, just basically to harass them mm. and tell them how you know lonely people are and humans, and, and they stink and so mm. on and so forth. And you know, so that's uh, definitely something uh, that happens. But actually, it, again, it's like. Um, you know, something that's uh, akin to a, you know, a poop, <laughs> you know, uh. telling someone else that they smell like poop. <laughs> you know. When in reality, you smell the other side. Uh, some of you may have smelled it during some of the uh, your sessions, but Ms. A and myself, you know, I, I smell energy and I can smell dense energy and it ain't pleasant. Yeah. So there's some things I smell very similar in the, the so-called realm of the hallway, but there are things I smell on the other side. And, you know, it's like individuals would tell you, oh, you're dirty, and you're this, and But in reality, you check them out, they never, you know, they don't take a bath for like months, you know. Mm. So, anyway. Thank you, Chief. Um, I don't know, this just inspires me to think about this other question because um, it's, it was, they were asking, you know, are the spirits in the movie density or, you know, our consciousness? And you were actually saying that everything is consciousness, 
and density when you were when you refer to density is it true that it just means consciousness that have fully adopted uh embraced that role yeah they're, they're totally broken and they really as they said they embrace you know whatever the role is that you know, you gave to them so when we can go and liken it to i don't know if it's new Sure, but we talked about it a little bit the soot balls and the, um, the the paper doll things that were flying around and attacking uh, the you know, um, Aku. That I would say Zaniba, not Zaniba, but Yubaba. Oh, not Yubaba. Yes, Yubaba, Chief. Yubaba's the. Oh, Zin, yeah, Zaniba's yeah, paper. Zaniba I'm sorry, Chief. Paper, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the little paper dolls. Mm -hmm. So I would say that she's like a yin of the yin character, you know, who literally took consciousness and turned them into these little paper things who have no awareness of what they are or, or you know, what they were before, but their object, objectives, excuse me, objective is to fulfill the wishes of who they consider to be their maker. Mm. You know, so the real uh, tricky one has to do with um, the boy with uh, Oh, Kumaji? Kumaji. Because he tend you know, he turned out to be kind of like an, you know, like a elder, kindly elder guy, but he's guilty of doing the same thing to consciousness in the sense that he did that to the symbol as well. Yes, and it's interesting because sometimes those, you know, there's so many variety of, of uh, types of density and the way that they do things, their, their mode of working for Yin of Yin. And like, for example, in the in, in the Japanese version, they were saying that Yubaba and Zeniba are two halves, like a fragment of, of a whole. Mm -hmm. And in the English version, they just said they were twins, which yeah. it doesn't give a good um, actually description of the intent of the uh, the maker. Yeah, well, it's, it's literally uh, something that's like diffusing anything that goes you know, deeper into the other realm. So they, you know, they're like pasteurizing. I said, oh, there's twins, but we're just talking about that they are of the same, but a split of a consciousness, you know, that they, that don't get along with each other, you know. Yes, because they, because people would like to sit, think that oh, Zaniba's the nice granny, but she's an enslaving consciousness in in the in the form of these little paper dolls, and so is Yubaba. She steals their names if they forget them; she, they become her little slaves. Yeah, forever. Yeah. Forever. No. Yeah. And uh, but. <clears throat> I don't want to get out of, uh, too far out of order. Yes, so I'll um I will jump back into the order. So um the the next thing that happens is so the radish spirit helps her to get all the way up to Yubaba's um, place, and then Yubaba does this in intimidation trick where she yanks her from through a bunch of doors, and then like gets in her face and starts you know touching her neck with her long fingernails. Um, I, I, I've seen, you know, people do that. That's why Chief said they're not much different than how people behave. Intimidation games, like she, she did it on Shihiro, and then she also did it on Haku. But at that time, Haku had remembered his name, or like as symbolic of, you know, remembering yourself as consciousness of supreme consciousness, universe. Mm -hmm. But sometimes. Chief, I, it's confusing when when someone's behavior is so um, defined by the system, but they want to say in word only that they are consciousness of supreme consciousness universe. How do you? Are you talking about what uh, if it was uh, having to do with people that I work on? Um, just people in general, I guess you'd say. Well, <clears throat> a lot of folks, if they haven't been through, uh, you know, having clearing. Uh, they're usually regurgitating something that's in their room again. Oh. oh. You know, so again, uh, the, the system is big on throwing garbage and, you know, and then they're telling you that you should know things that you never need to know, you know, hmm. unless you, uh, you're going to be a uh, biologist or whatever, you know, need to know the periodic table or anything like that. Hmm. You know, um, I had to learn all that crap, but I never used it to this day. And it's just like wasted information. It doesn't it hasn't made my life better by knowing all this stuff, but it's literally is a distraction. It's like you know, just throwing filler into your into your energy. 
So you need to know this, you need to know that, you know, you know, then, you know young kids are running around, you know, say, I need to know that, I need to know this. If I don't get good grades, then I'm a bad person or I'm a dummy and so on and so forth. So they have all this, you talk about intimidation. Uh, intimidation comes along, comes with this realm, you know. The kids um, know, and, uh, and even the adults who've known the times when they were kids that their parents were intimidating them. You know? So this is a realm that's based on you know, a whole you know, a whole lot of nonsense. Uh, one of the things also, as far as like individuals thinking that they can just <clears throat> make a clean jump from you know from uh, contamination into enlightenment, that's a big joke. Because again, we're going along with the wheelie bin, they don't give a crap what they throw in there. It's liquids and whatever, and it's all. So you know what it is? It's like I get my hip boots on, I do sessions, and get in there and start getting through and reading through all this stuff. And then have to drain things out and all that. You know, so, uh, but again, the work, you know, it's, it's tedious, but it's effective, or else I wouldn't have people, you know, Still joining the forum. So, but that's literally the disrespect of the system of this realm. There's nothing here uh, about you that they feel they need to respect. And then again, looking at the elites, like as you say, the Baba, she might as well be like a reptilian or something. Because you know? these guys are pure density who behave like that. So again, reptilians are all consciousness. You know, initially came from the same source, something happened along the way, and then became, you know, what they are now, a major problem to other consciousness, which I would say is fellow consciousness in the universe. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, remember you are talking about that it is people's privilege to pay to have a session with you because, I mean, you're digging in their dumpster and clearing them where they will never get a clearing like what you do for them. And, and I just um, I just appreciate those who show you respect because it's not an easy job. I mean, people think, oh, but what you do is easy. No way. So you try to do it. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you can't do it, it's not easy. And then they can get themselves hurt trying to copy you. Well, yeah, there have been people who try to copy and then next thing you know, they got a problem. Because they don't understand the realm. Ugh. So again, that's why I just push to say, yeah, just say I'm an alien because you can't figure out how I work. And you know, and even the ones who try to steer me away, you know, with money or whatever to support their shit, uh, you know, they can't figure out why I won't think certain things because it'll undermine, my, you know, the mission. So no, I'm not, you know, you're not gonna buy me off. No, but I didn't come here to be bought off. This would be a waste of my expression here. I went through a whole lot of these Earth years learning this crap. Just so at the end, someone's like, hey, guys, let this for a dog. You're going to, you know, support COVID, right? No, I'm not. <laughs> money, money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know money. It's useful, but you're not going to buy me with it. Yeah, and you could tell those who were um, who were very much a part of the system, because it's funny, whenever uh, Yubaba, whenever Haku tells you, Baba, you've lost something very dear to you. She looks at her money immediately. Yeah, she looks at the yeah, yeah. And then the baby. Yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, yeah, because he was like, no, not it. Yeah. And or no face, his thing with gold, he's like, ah, yeah. Yeah, he said, ah, this is what, you know, makes him tick. That's why there was so much a uh, reflection of this realm, the amount of nonsense that people, you know, perpetrate over money. And then some that get, you know, get hold of it. They don't know what to do with it. Then next thing you know, they don't have it anymore again. Then they're back in the same situation of, I need to get money, you know? So that was definitely, again, I, I uh, after you know, looking at it, and it's always cool when I do the reviews, because I will observe the film again, but I have to, I end up observing it in a different way, in a very neo-somatic way. Even though I will watch things in a very neo-somatic way with the neo-somatic light, because sometimes it's just, you know, killing time or just wanting to observe whether it's a good story or not. But then uh, when I do these views, I end up going deeper into the subject matter and the parallels and the influences that have affected the director of the movie. Mm. Um, I'll go on to the next thing. Um, so I really like how, so Yubaba ends up giving her a job 
uh, some situation with the baby ended up making it better for uh, Chihiro to get the job. And Chihiro was really sticking to her, her guns and uh, being very gutsy and just like, I want to work, you know, even whenever her mouth was unzipped. She's like, I want to work, <laughs> you know. And um, so she's, so the next lesson was the lesson with Haku and Lin. Both of them showed their acting skills to help Chihiro get that job. And um, it was like a, lo a lot of stealth. And so she, he, he makes sure that she, you know, uh, when Haku tells her, you know, address me as Master Haku, he's showing her, you know, how to behave. And then Lin does acting as well. So she's like, uh, don't dump me on, don't dump Chihiro on me, Haku. Why are you picking on me? And then they walk away, you know, a safe distance. Yeah, he said, yeah, you do whatever you want with it. You yeah. Eat her or something. Eat her, boil her, whatever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And she's just standing there like, you know, yeah. <laughs> nervous. But it was cool because a lot of a lot of movies that I've seen uh, from the West that I've experienced they, uh, they show the characters, you know, um, self-sabotage a lot. And I liked how Lin and Chihiro uh, walk a safe distance away. And then Lin's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you made it. That's great. I'm happy for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which was, it makes sense. Well, so, like, the historian, you know, had thought to it. And, you know, and I know we talk about some of these really weak um, scripts that they, you know, that uh, come out of Hollywood or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the person is doing something that you would never do. You know, like, okay, uh, let's, uh, we're going to celebrate. Let's celebrate when we're far away from, you know, uh, you know the from battlefield. Yeah, from the battlefield. <laughs> or, you know, they stop and says, we just need to, let's hug, hug, hug. Oh, you know, so like, so you guys have to be like running for cover, yeah. get to cover yeah. way, you know, like miles away and then hug each other, you know. Because, you know, so. You know, uh, one thing I like, uh, like I said, about a number of his films is that they're very, there's some realism to it, you mm. know, to the story. It, it makes sense that, you know, these guys were, were putting this act on, and then they wait till they get away, away, and he's like, boy, you really pulled it off. And she's like, whoa. Yeah, because she believed the act. Yeah, she believed the act. It's like, oh, this is a lesson, you know. They're doing this, to, you know, to try to help me, but to keep themselves from getting, you know, in trouble. Also, you know, it keeps her from getting, you know, whatever the uh, bottle would do to her. So I like that. Yeah, I have to like that. Thank you, Chief. All right. So, um, like you're saying, acting and stealth is re required in this realm, mm -hmm. and learning to think on your feet. I mean, you've taught me a lot of those things, and just watching your stealth. Is, has taught me so many things and I still have a lot to learn because I could relate to Chihiro just feeling kind of lost, not sure where I'm going and who to, tr who I'm not, I shouldn't be trusting because that's a program, but who to like listen to and who not to listen to. Yeah, it's always, you know, observe if you, you know, and, and some folks say, well, it's like right there, I have to make a decision. Then don't make that decision. If someone's trying to push you into a decision, you know, immediately there's something up. Observe. What's up? Or I've had, you know, situations in the past when someone trying to do business. Oh, that deal will be gone if you don't sign up right now. I said, well, if it's gone, then, you know, you know come back to me. That wasn't, you know, for me. But I sleep on everything. You know, so I'll make this decision. I said, nope, I won't. You'll lose it. Well, I guess it wasn't that. Then they don't know what to do. So, where was I? Uh, anyway. Just continue, Chihiro? Yeah, we can go ahead. Okay, so then, um, so uh, Chihiro doesn't feel so well because she's ha taking in all the information and that she's not sure about Haku, who was really uh, nice to her in the in the beginning, and she's just not, um, doesn't understand acting and stealth yet. But then when she wakes up in the morning, Haku comes and he says, I will show you your parents. Mm -hmm. And I um, and he shows her his, the parents and then he, he comforts her. And so she's she's learning. Okay, I have to do. I have to learn how to how to survive in this realm. I, you know, Haku does a great job of being that hardworking lone wolf kind of <laughs> character. And um, so in in the end, she she starts being um, a, a bit more you know tough. And uh, the next thing she she does is she um, she has a little meltdown, but she continues. That's the main part. She's just mm -hmm. continuing. 
Um, is there anything else you wanted to say or no, continue? No, no, okay. <laughs> so uh, then she ends up noticing that there's this character called No Face stalking her. <laughs> He's just kind of around. And um, so one of the questions was a, a little bit about, you know, is No Face, what kind of character is No Face? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Oh, or the, just... uh, the question about whether he was a light being or something? Yeah, like yeah. No, he's not a light being, but, you know, but again, I don't really feel that the movie shows the other side in the way that I know the other side would be, that mm -hmm. there are no real light beings, but there are those, uh, if I beat them down hard enough, they don't want to work for me. You know? But as far as like, uh, it was that having that empathy, you know, they see that, wow, this kid's really, you know, whatever about her, and they have, you know, they feel empathy towards her. Uh, no face, his had to do with wanting to possess her, you know. He was lonely. She, she acknowledged him. It's like um, uh, there are individuals who are really, really damaged, and people don't show them any attention. And then some person who's, you know, a much more, I say, a nicer person, uh, you know, treats them nicely, not that they want to be their best friend, but they want to treat them like, you know, like a the whole consciousness. These folks are so da uh, so damaged that they, you know, they, they want to claim them. That's actually it reminds me of uh, uh, Rick and Ralph. Yeah, Ralph Breaks the Internet has a lot of examples about that. Yeah, but even in the beginning, she, you know, that the one, the character, uh, Renelope, yes. she helped him out, and therefore, she, you know, he claimed her as his bestest buddy in the world. Some people are only um, um, they they are only familiar with that kind of so-called affection because mm -hmm. some people think that if someone wants to own them or control them that that's caring when it's it's not it's yeah, damaging. Yeah, it's confusing. It depends on the person because there are individuals that don't want you know like I'm one of those you know I don't, I'm not into being uh, claimed or possessed by anyone and that was that way when I was a kid it just felt weird and you know someone say claim you. It just felt all of a sudden. I just felt like the handcuffs were going on, and the, you know, and the leg shackles or something. You know, so, but I like you. I said, uh, I'm not so sure if I like you. You know, I'm trying to be friendly with you, but you're weird. You know, they step in and say, Hey, how you doing? He's, someone's talking to me. Or you know, a girl who's a uh, who's attractive talks to a guy who's not attractive. Then people aren't really, you know, they just kind of treat him like he's whatever. And she was being nice, and the next thing you know, you know, she's got a stalker on her hand. So yeah, he is pretty stalker. <laughs> yeah. So literally, yeah, he was he was a stalker. He was hanging around, you know, observing her really. You know? mm, yeah. And you know, why was he outside the um, you know that doorway that she left open for him? Mm -hmm. He could have been anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and, and when I look on, oh, go ahead. No face stalkerness. Yes, stalkerness. <laughs> and then whenever they, whenever they, I looked online, there was all these pictures, like romantic drawings of drawing Chihiro and no face, like he's a humanoid. I'm like, he's a controlling guy. That's like, I, I'm sorry. I yeah, was something, yeah, he's literally off. His, he's off his nuts. nuts. Yeah, literally. Yeah, I mean, because they, they show him like, He's like eating people and he's like, yay me, look at all this food everywhere. You know, I am a deity now. And like all these people lined up, he says like plenty of butt to kiss. So, yeah, right, you know, that song that yeah, the song, that, that was actually really, I like that. The song was fitting anyways, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, because his butt is getting bigger. It's yes. More, it's, you know, more to kiss or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's doing, quite the character. Uh, yeah, on, on top of, you know, not that these guys didn't deserve to be scammed. You know, where you turn, you know, dirt into gold, and they think it's, you know, whatever his skill was, they're inviting them, this is real gold, and then after he gets, like, bummed out, it all turns to dirt, you know? Yeah. But... So, you know, he wasn't, a, he definitely wasn't a light being, but he was definitely more like someone in this realm. Yeah. But the realm is influenced by that realm anyway. But I can understand people get confused, because if someone does some little nice thing, that must mean they're a good person. You know, he gave her those little tokens. You know, he must be a nice person, but his in his intent was very controlling. Yeah, you know, when, I mean, what part they don't they don't uh, don't they get where, you know, uh, he's losing his his mind and you know, I want sin. <laughs> you know, that's all he wants is yeah. her. You know, and you know, it's like, look, I got gold. Yeah. 
you know, so he's actually trying to jerk her around with that thing going too. Right, right. You know? <laughs> So yeah. anyway, that's so true. <laughs> no, I mean, like, cause uh, it's good to separate ourselves from questions that we ask and actually just get the information, learn something from it. Because she could have just got offended by the roughness of the character, you know, Haku or Lin or mm -hmm. even Kamaji, and learned nothing. Yeah. But instead, she took the lesson and matured herself. Well, they had to leave her on her own with her own devices too at times. So, mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna have to, you know, yeah. take her slim kid. When they, you know, when she went to your father, they, you know, yeah, uh, she had to do Lynn it alone. Know. She said, you, wow, you pulled it off. <laughs> that piece of work, <laughs> you know. So, yes. Yeah. Yes, it was very cool. But to tell you the truth, it, you know, I don't know why they would have no face. Haku was the one who really, you know, came through uh, for her from the very start, and then Lynn, and even, uh, you know, even uh, um, the, guy, the uh, boiler room guy. Even though he's you know guilty of you know, you, trapping consciousness himself. You, go ahead, Chief. But you know he was supportive as far as the yeah. I mean you know I think that like you said um, that the the true nature of supreme consciousness universe is respect and consideration for other consciousness. But in this realm, it's so twisted that they don't know what respect and consideration even looks like, what it feels like, um, what it's any sense of it because i actually had to come to you chief to ask you like what am i being respectful or considerate what does it look like you know how do I, how do i be how do i be excuse me <laughs> and um just people their skewed view of this fucking word love and the skewed view of affection their skewed view of parental units their skewed view of friends their skewed view of themselves they don't know how to respect and consider themselves so how can they get that from someone else <laughs> Sorry. A, yeah, yeah. So again, if you don't like yourself, you know, you can't expect anyone else to like you. You know, and also if you don't understand what uh, consideration is, if you don't like yourself, you probably don't understand. You know, you're having a hard time understanding what consideration is, respect to consideration. Again, if you don't respect and have consideration for yourself, you may take somebody's really twisted way of supposedly showing consideration as something genuine. You know, that's why we talk about the um, you know loaded words like love. You know, and there's still, you know, to this day no clear um, definition other than I really, really like you or something, you know. So if you know someone wants to leave someone after they've been abusive, it's like I love you. And say, why do you think I really, really like you? Why are you leaving? But they you know throw this amorphous word love in there that you know define that other than a, a, a word that's used to manipulate mostly you know so say so, yeah i love peace which means i really really like peace i get it you know so <clears throat> you know i love this music yeah i really really like this music uh you know or so it's so, like you know i i love if you're saying if it wasn't something that was manipulative manipulative uh, manipulative because <laughs> Mm -hmm. And they're saying, I love my children. They're still a little shaky because there's times you don't like the children. I take it from me. And any parent who says that they always like their children, give me a break. You know. So just observe them as little little beings and hopefully you can try to steer them in a way where they don't, you know, blow themselves up with everyone else. So they said, well, I love you. I mean that clients they would talk about that. The, the parental unit was, would say, I love you, like that, with an angry face. Yeah. So I said, well, I have respect and consideration for you. It's plain and simple. Yes. So I don't, you know, I don't think it's just, I love you. Do you have respect and consideration for me? Yeah, I do. Okay, then we're, we're good. You don't have to use that word. Like you said, sometimes they have so much, so little respect and consideration for themselves that they won't leave someone who's using manipulative, manipulative love or control, like yeah. the No Face character. They thought it was like a cool, you know, idea for a boyfriend. I'm like, wow, you know. Yeah, it's like it's damaged, you know, uh, <laughs> women who will uh, send love letters to mass murderers. <laughs> you know, they do. I, I didn't know. <laughs> Which tells you something really, you know, uh, you know, this is a realm that's just designed to drive everyone insane, seriously. <laughs> so, you know, you wonder why people have such weird leanings. It's like, just be this by design. 
and breathing and smelling that stuff and eating it, you know, yeah. drinking it. Right. Yeah. Like, um, you know, you were saying eating other people's food, you're eating their dislike for their selves, would you say? Yeah, so their stress, their, yeah. you know, yeah, whatever their stress is, whatever their disappointment is, uh, you will feel that. Mm. And if you don't feel it, it just means that you're really just really dead inside anyway, and you're just a, you know, a, um, a sit ball. So the sit balls just did what, you know, but they did have a sense of humor and they didn't, you know, know what they liked and didn't like. <laughs> Um, or the paper things that show no personality whatsoever. Yeah, they were broken more, yeah. even more so than the soot balls. Yeah, well, again, it's like um, how they were looking soot balls, I would say, would symbolize the human race. <sighs> and, you know, and the one who created it would symbolize, you know, yet again, which means that he didn't care. Uh, except as long as they did their work, he didn't want them to disappear because he wanted the work done. But uh, talk about collateral damage. It's like with the, the, the paper things that you thought of them. So, oh, they're just paper. No, they're you know, for them. Anything to work and move, they have to be conscious. It's even like down to the smallest little mouse is a consciousness. You know? How you deal with it is however you're going to deal with it. You know, I'm not going to hit it in my house and overrun my mice or anything. But the reality of the matter is still consciousness. But they're in a really wacko realm. So everything behaves wacko. You know. But again, uh, when the paper you know, cutouts were you know, flying around attacking uh, Haku, they were collateral damage. You know. But they were consciousness. Then I'm going to say that when we look at it, like, oh, it's just paper. Or someone said, oh, it's just, it's just a dollar. Or it's, you know, but pet owners is something that I didn't consider a pet. That's just a mouse. And I tell you, I've felt my share of mice, <laughs> you know, being a homeowner and, you know, uh, back when. But again, even though I was doing it, it's like I have to make some decisions or I'm going to allow something to overrun me because it's supposed to be a conscious, because it's a consciousness. And this is an insane world. You have to do things to, to protect yourself. So anyway. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I believe that's the end because it's uh, we're just two minutes over, no problem. Oh, we're two minutes over. Okay. Wow, that went by pretty fast. Yeah, so fast. Okay. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Well, okay, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank, thank you for you your questions. Thank you again for, for coming and the questions. Um, you know, I hope it was interesting. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, thanks again, and we will uh, talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.